Hello, hello, my friends, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to be doing some coffee dyeing, and I am very excited. We are going to be coffee dyeing printed paper, printed copy paper. <laughs> now, I'm not going to give too much away because um, I want it to be a bit of a surprise. But what I've done is I have printed off um, some Halloween printed paper on regular copy paper and I'm printing Halloween simply because I'm I'm making my Halloween journals I'm trying to get all of my Halloween journals and postcards and all of the stuff done by the end of July so I can have everything up and ready to go on my website and on my Etsy store for August so I know some of you are like whoa lady <laughs> we just it just turned summer last week but I have to work pretty far in advance. So I thought I have to do this anyway. So I thought it would be fun to bring you along. And I was right. It was tons of fun to do this uh, with you. So I printed off several patterns using just black ink. And then I coffee dyed the papers um, with those patterns. And I laid them on top of each other to get the imprint of the paper on the bottom part of the paper it turned out amazing. Um, so what I do is I just walk you through the whole process. I like to call this the, um, oh, it's so good. I wish you could smell this too. The only problem is when I smell coffee, I want cookies. I'm like, Ooh, I could really use a chocolate chip cookie. Um, so why I, I call this the lazy ladies the lazy lady, say that five times fast, um, technique is because I'm not taking each piece of coffee dyed paper and laying it out individually uh, to dry. I know a lot of people will, you know, put towels and old sh shower curtains and everything all over the floors and then they lay out the pages one by one or even two by two. Um, but my, my, thing here is that I actually want these pages to dry on top of each other so some of the pattern or the shapes are imprinted on the pattern or on the paper sorry underneath it. I originally was going to leave that whole stack of papers in this uh, casserole dish overnight but it was really wet as you know as it is so I, I eventually sort of broke them down into piles and um, it worked out great. So one of the reasons why I like this idea too is that if you're short on space and you don't have a lot of floor space or outdoor space and you can be a little bit patient because this does take a little bit longer to dry but it works out great because you could just put a towel down or like I said an old shower curtain put it down on a table or somewhere on the floor and just let them dry in the piles. So it took inside and outside about 24 hours just a little over 24 hours for these to dry and they came out great the texture of them is great the sound as you could tell is great so I'm really really happy with how they turned out um, so it's it's ridiculously simple if you um, what was I gonna say if you're going to you know be working with papers and you're not concerned about them looking perfect then this is a really great technique there is a million videos out there um, on here on YouTube about coffee dyeing I'm not really showing you anything new per se but I am showing you what I found to work really well for me um, by accident because I had left a bunch of the papers in the casserole dish last year overnight when I was also dyeing Halloween and I didn't intend for the, the prints to print on top of each other. And when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, this is, this is really great. So it was a really happy accident. And um, I'm going to share that with you today. And hopefully you will find it inspiring and interesting. And um, you give it a shot yourself. So without any further ado, let's get started. Um, like I said, this is going to be a three-parter. So first we do these pages with just regular copy paper and um, the black ink. 
Then the next video, part two, I'm going to be doing, I'm um, going to be using some different kinds of paper. And then in the last video, I'm going to be using stencils and a couple other things to try and get some interesting images on coffee dyed paper. The only glitch is that I have to find the Halloween stencils that I bought last year. <laughs> I put them in a safe place. You know when you put things in a safe place and then you go to find them and you're like, wow, that is a really, a really safe place. But anyways, okay, without any further ado, um, I hope you enjoy this as much as I did because I had a, a lot of fun. So let's just get right into it. I'll be right back. These pages here that I've printed out and I coffee dyed last Halloween some printed paper by accident sort of <laughs> it's kind of a long story but I have to say I really like how this turned out so I printed it off just using black ink no other color I don't think maybe there's blue in there but for the most part it's just black right um, on just regular coffee uh, regular copy paper but what was interesting is I found that if I layered the papers on top of each other sometimes the print of the bottom paper would be seen on the back of the top paper so we're going to try that again today I'm going to do this video um, in stages so what we'll do is, I'm going to make up the coffee solution, I'm going to put it in this here, this casserole dish, then I'm going to layer the papers, I'm going to leave them for a little bit, we'll look at them, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to empty the coffee out of this, and I'm going to leave the paper stacked up overnight. Um, I'm not going to lay them out, I'm not going to put them out on the floor, I'm not going to put them in the oven, I just want to see what happens when we layer them and leave them wet, pressed up against each other overnight, because I think we might get a really interesting effect. I'm doing these papers um, now for Halloween because I'm working on Halloween junk journals, and I think one of the best things about doing coffee dyed paper is that <laughs> there's absolutely 100% no mistakes. Like, there isn't a wrong way to coffee dye, which I have to tell you, lights me up like a Christmas tree on, <laughs> I don't know what, because the perfectionist in me is really enjoying the fact that there's, there isn't any way that I can screw this up. So let's see what we get. I'm interested, I'm curious to see how this is going to go. So I'm going to put my phone up above. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to use this coffee to coffee dye. I'm going to use a ton of it, but I'm going to use this to do the coffee dyeing itself because it's, I don't know if I can get this off. I'll show you in a minute. It's a little bit of a lighter roast, and then I'm going to use a darker coffee to spritz the papers later. So anyways, let's see where we get. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. So hang on to your seats, friends. <laughs> It's about to get very exciting with coffee dyeing. Okay, I'll be back. Alrighty, Rue. So we have. Um, I've I boiled the water and it's about <laughs> the not too scalding hot temperature. I'm not gonna wear gloves because I don't mind getting my hands uh, dirty. Coffee dyed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in quite a bit. So I've got this is the Kirkland Instant Coffee, and it is, let's see, it is dark-ish, but not too dark. So the last time I coffee dyed was quite a while ago, and like I said, I used this um, Maxwell House Original Roast, and it's quite different, like you can see. And this came out dark, but not dark dark, you know what I mean? And then I have a little bit left in here, this is Nescafe Rich, and this is quite a bit darker. But here's my thought. I want to go back later and squirt some of this with coffee dyed water again to create that sort of, to give it extra staining, for lack of a better word. And I know that when I tried 
to use uh, this and this and I tried to make it like stronger by just adding more and more coffee it didn't get darker so I'm toying with the idea of using this and a little bit of this and then using the extra dark stuff to spritz it and spray it. I'm going to try that. Um, because I'm, I'm working on the assumption that... I, from what I could tell any other time I've coffee dyed is that there's only so dark I can get one kind of coffee, right? So I'm thinking that if I start with the lighter stuff and then I want to go darker with the spritz, I'll use this. Okay, anyways. Let's let's just let's just start playing and see where we get. Okay, so I'm going to add one two three of these and then these are big Oh yeah, look at that. These are big heaping teaspoons or tablespoons as well. So that's six. Well, why not? <laughs> Seven. Eight. Lucky number eight. Okay, now let's add this water here. Oh, it's still pretty hot. Oh yeah, well this is looking pretty good and dark. I mean, here's the thing. I. I watched a lot of videos um, at the beginning of the week and, and just sort of looking at how all the other ladies do their coffee dyeing and what they do and there is a lot of different techniques out there. I have to say I was really, really, um, I mean I'd watched coffee dyed videos before but I kind of went down a rabbit hole this time and I was really surprised by how many different kinds of techniques people tried and things that they added to the water or um, some people were very precise in particular and just did one page and then took the page out and laid it down and um, I just decided this time to save <laughs> to save my back so normally what I would do is I would fill the house with towels on the floor I'm going to start adding paper while I'm talking. Um, I would put paper down on the floor, like a shower curtain sort of, and towels, and I would just lay paper, lay paper, lay paper. That's hard on, on the back. I'm not 20, so... Okay, so this is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to... I'm going to start, we're just, we're not going to overthink this, right? So let's just put this in here. And then I'm going to play with putting plain pieces in between and then just layering printed pieces on top of printed pieces. And see where we get. I think I have uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, about 60 sheets here. It smells really good. Now I want to have some, <laughs> I want some cookies. I want some cookies to go with my coffee. Okay, so now let's put this here. And what I might do is just stop talking, which I know for some people, they would say that it was quite impossible for me to stop talking. Well, I'm going to prove them wrong for all of one minute. <laughs> okay, so let's layer. Let's put this here. Oh, it's not that hot. Okay, now I'm just going to put in um, a blank one here. I really like how dark this is. Okay, so I'm just going to start adding up, and then I'm going to fast forward the process so you're not stuck here for hours watching me layer paper.
So the idea with this in part is I'm sort of, in my mind, I'm calling this the lazy, the lazy gals coffee dyeing method. Now, I'm, I don't really know if this will work. And it's kind of funny because I was over at my neighbor Bob's today and Bob is my, is delightful. He's 90 and he is a hoot. And we got talking about cabbage rolls for some reason. And he was talking about how much he loves cabbage rolls, but how much work they are, right? And I had said to him, oh, do you know about the lazy man's cabbage roll recipes? And he was like, no. So I was explaining to him that it's sort of like making a casserole. Actually, let's put a blank piece in there. But you don't go through all the trouble of making the individual cabbage rolls. So you kind of get the same results, but it just looks a little bit different. It still tastes yummy if you do it right, right? So as I was putting this together, I was thinking this is sort of like the ladies, the lazy ladies, <laughs> as opposed to the lazy man's cast, uh, cabbage rolls. This is the lady, lazy ladies coffee dye because as I was watching all these very inspiring women do their coffee dyeing, they put all their papers together and then they would pour this water out and they rem then they remove each sheet, like I said, page by page, and then they lay them out individually to dry. And normally, as I stated earlier, I would put all the shower old shower curtains down or garbage bags or towels and then I would lay a bazillion pieces of paper out all over the house but my 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 idea is that I'm just gonna let them dry on top of each other because not that long ago when I was doing some coffee drying I did kind of forget about some left in a in a another casserole dish and when I came back the next day I was like oh damn I left those there overnight but to my surprise they were very easy to separate and they still had really great markings on them and that's sort of what led me to believe that maybe maybe I don't need to dry them in such a way that everybody else has been drying them now I'm look at that that's nice and stained on my hands too I'm gonna add a little bit more water here um, so let's see what happens the worst is that they're going to dry in, I don't know, some really weird way. I don't know. Because I think part of it is when some of the other gals were laying their papers out, they didn't want what was underneath them to be imprinted. Like, they didn't want them stuck together. Whereas I'm kind of looking for that um, effect. So let's see where we get. So I was watching some of the some of the women do some really fun things with uh, plastic tablecloths um, and the plastic placemats, and some of the patterns that they get are just astonishing. And I've seen people do um, coffee dyeing with with wide lace and other fun things like that too. So I have a, a whole bucket of old cotton doilies that I got from the Goodwill years and years and years ago and I've never done anything with them. I'm not particularly um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not attached to them in the way that they look or their color so I thought it might be kind of interesting to try some coffee dyeing with some actual doilies as opposed to the plastic ones because I don't really mind if they get stained. Right? But because I'm coffee dyeing specifically for Halloween at the moment, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be trying some other things. Okay, so we're nearing the end here. So let me just do this and we'll speed it up again.
Okay, so I have, looks like one of each sheet left. I was watching Pam from the Paper Outpost, uh, one of her older coffee dye videos. <laughs> that woman is fearless, I swear. She was taking great big huge chunks of paper, copy paper, like about that thick. Like, I don't know, more than a hundred sheets for sure. And she was just plunking the whole thing down in the, in the coffee dye water. And she was sort of like moving it around and getting... Oh my god, it was so funny. That woman cracks me up. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, I love it because she's fearless. That's one of the reasons why I really like Pam. Um, she just she just goes for it. She doesn't overthink it, or at least she doesn't come across that way. Okay, so here's the last one. Da, 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 da. So, it's 8.30. 8.30? Holy cow, how did it get to be 8.30 at night already? I feel like last time I checked it was noon. So, I know that these probably won't get a whole lot darker, but I think what I'll do is I'll leave these in, look at that, for a, a good half an hour. I got some other things that I can do here. Oh, that's looking great. Already, already. Um, I have, just as a sidebar, I have printed off other things, other sheets with color. Like I printed off some ledger, vintage looking ledger paper. Uh, and when I coffee dyed it, I lost the color. I didn't lose the black, but I lost the color. So I'm just sticking to uh, that's why I just printed everything here today in, with the black. Oh, I'm, I'm loving these already. Even if we don't do anything else, I'm loving, I'm loving these. Okay, so I don't rip the edges too, too much. Let's, oh, I got one more. Hang on, let's do here. Because it's always good to have some extra plain. Okay, so let's swoosh that in there. Swoosh, 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 swoosh. Oh, no, I have... Hang on. I totally miscalculated. Oh, that's okay. Let's... I got some water left. It's still nice and warm. Oh, that feels great. <laughs> it's so soothing and calming. Oh, not that I've had a rough day. I had a lovely day so far today. Um, one of my highlights is always going next door and spending time with Bob. Like I said, who's 90? And I love listening to his old stories. You know how it was Tuesdays with Maury? Well, I kind of have Wednesdays with Bob. Bob's a hoot. He's got these stories. He was a salesman for many years. He's been my neighbor now for 10 years. I love this man. Um, he's like a grandfather that I don't have anymore. Um, but I wish I knew Bob when he was in his 40s. <laughs> and, you know, I go over there at like 3 and he's like, Hey, Lisa, come on in. Would you like a glass of wine? <laughs> and I'm like, Bob, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. He's a hoot. He's got stories. Oh, my God. Okay. So, anyways, this feels great. And even though I'm not stressed out or anything today, this is, I have to say, quite relaxing. There's sort of a finger painting-esque soothing quality to this. And the sound of the water. And you know what I always say about water? Go with the flow. Don't get stuck. Right? Okay. Now, what have I got here? I've got, I think I'm going to channel Pam. <laughs> Um, let's just do this. This is what Pam was doing only with like 30 times the amount of paper. I wonder... No, I'm just going to do it. Let's not overthink it. So that's what she did. She just plunked it all in and then before it got too soppy... You can never have too much coffee dyed paper. Now, the other thing is, I know there's a whole th th train of thought about out there about putting it in the, in the oven and the sounds that it makes, and 
you know, how flat it gets and all that kind of thing. I'm not going to be a coffee dyed paper aficionado at this point. I just really want to get the paper to look grungy and kind of gross because it just it is so fitting in the Halloween journals, right? Yeah. Oh, the smell too. If you're a coffee lover, even if you're not big on instant coffee, which I don't mind instant coffee. Inst the smell of instant coffee reminds me of camping. So I'm happy with that. But yeah, I think while I, this sits, I'm going to go have a cookie. Because <laughs> I want something sweet to go with my cut, my, my, my uh, coffee dyed paper. So yeah, it looks like what Pam was doing here is helpful to open it up and get it in there. I mean, it's paper, right? It's going to absorb anyways, but let's just... Let's just experiment. Okay, I'm going to shut it down there. And let's see where we get. So what's gonna, what I'm going to do next is in half an hour we'll come back. I'm going to drain the coffee out. And then we'll just leave what's in here, I think, overnight and see what happens. I might put it on the back porch a little bit for a while. It's pretty warm outside. It's about... 24 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is for my American friends. I think it's somewhere around 73. Alrighty now, it is uh, just after 9.30. So I went outside and brought in the girls from outside and I got caught up uh, doing a couple other things. So these sat for a little bit longer than I initially thought they would. Now, um, I have, let me just move this here. I poured out already uh, the majority of what was left in here. And um, I'm going to pull this out here so I can get the rest of this out. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of squeeze it a little bit. Just let that really pour or drip. I guess it's more of a drip, isn't it? Okay, so I'm going to set that there. So I, there isn't going to be a whole lot more to show at this point because what I'm going to do is, oops, there. I'm going to put all the papers back in. Hang on. I'm going to save this coffee. Um, I will do so I'll use it for something else but what I think I'm going to do now let's just make sure I'm in in frame here let's just <laughs> let's just have a peek okay so this is the stuff that we did at the end now no, I'm going to wait till it's dry. What I did consider for a split second was I thought, I wonder if I should spray it. But if I'm putting stuff on... Oh, but you know what one, one of the girls did? You know what we're going to do? Hang on. On this blank stuff, one of the gals... There was an Australian woman. No, who was it? Oh, I don't... I can't remember. I'm sorry. To have, whoever it was that had that great idea. Um... She did, she got out a few, maybe it was Pam. <laughs> Probably it was Pam. And she sprinkled a little bit of the dry stuff, just a tiny bit. Let's try that. Let's see what that gets us. And then, so here you can see that this, let's just sprinkle I'm tempted to experimenting, experimenting, <laughs> you know. Okay, so let's put a tiny little bit. I'm telling you, it's amazing what some people do with coffee dye, um, avocados to get the pink color. Oh my goodness. I'm going to eventually try 
doing some paper dyeing with beetroot. I love using beets in salads in the summer. Oh my God. A little bit of beet with some feta cheese. Ugh. But I know a lot of people don't like beets. I love beets. I always say that that's the Ukrainian in me. <laughs> the food of my ancestors. Oh yeah, whenever we would go to my Baba's there's always beets, beets in the borscht, you know? Well, let's give this another little go and see where we get. What's the worst that can happen, right? Okay, so there we go. Yeah, there were some ladies doing all kinds of fun paint or a paper dyeing with a writ fabric dye. That'll be fun to try. I think I'll leave that as a winter thing, maybe. Oh, yeah. Okay, so see, here we have already the... So the, the paper that was underneath it was the lady, the stabby lady with the knife. <laughs> right? Ha! I'm loving this. But you know what I'm thinking? I'm not gonna... I'm gonna... Mm, I'm not gonna mess with this. I was gonna... I was gonna take it all apart, and now I'm not. I'm not. I'm just gonna put this back in here. Like this, only upside down. The problem is, like so many other things, I get impatient. Did I have my head in there? I hope not. <laughs> That's my favorite trick. I get impatient and I want to see what these things are going to look like and then I ruin it. Well, not ruin it, but I I need to learn to keep my fingers out of things before it's actually time. Let's just... Oh, you guys, I'm loving this already. So, yeah, you can see... A little bit here again here she is on top of these skulls okay let's just leave it don't jinx it okay coffee dyed paper nighty night we'll see you tomorrow um, I my experience has been even if I leave this like this in a pile I'm just trying to get this to smooth out a little bit here. They don't stick together. So I know everybody likes to peel these apart and lay them out flat. But part of this experiment is to not do that. And I keep playing with this because I kind of want this to lay flat here. I don't know why. I guess there's something very instinctual in us, isn't there, about there, trying to problem solve. You can see a teeny tiny little bit where the spider web is on there as well. Oh, okay, I love it. Okay, so that's it for tonight. I'm not going to leave it outside. It's not as warm out there as I thought it was, so I'm just going to leave it in um, upstairs on the dining room table. And uh, we'll see once it once it um, we'll see how dry it is tomorrow afternoon. I'm thinking mid afternoon, so that it's almost nine, so nine to nine, and then let's say another three hours. That's twelve. That's eighteen hours. Let's see where we get with that. What kind of dry paper we have? So cliffhanger. <laughs> For all of you out there in TV land, it's a coffee dyed cliffhanger. And um, so let's see what tomorrow brings. And I'm very excited to see what comes of this. Here is another little bit of a cliffhanger. I got myself some plastic bats. They're decorations. Obviously they're decorations. 
um, there are these plastic bats and you're supposed to, you can fold them and they kind of look like they're 3D, right? And then you stick them on things. So we're going to do some coffee dyeing with these next and with some Halloween stencils. That will be the next chapter to this. So stay tuned for that. What is it they used to say? Same bat channel, same bat place. And I will see you tomorrow. So here's a little PS. It is almost 12.30 in the morning. And I decided to take them out of the casserole dish and lay them flat. Um, because I can't help myself. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought that I would... For some reason, I just thought it would be better to take them out. So I don't really know if it is or not. But hopefully the cats don't walk all over them in the night. But they are looking very good. And I am very much looking forward to peeling them apart and sharing what they look like with you tomorrow. So if when I get up tomorrow they're still quite damp, I might um, take them outside and put them on the... The table on the back porch. Uh, it's supposed to be nice and sunny out there tomorrow. So, anyhow, say good night, Sophie. Good night, Sophie. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Okay, so I brought these papers outside this morning, and they are drying really, really well. Hi, Sophie. Hey, beautiful girl. Um, most of them are almost dry. Um, and I'm moving around the things uh, that I have laying on them so that they don't leave too many marks. <laughs> it's just a mishmash of stuff. So it is, I think it's just after 3 o'clock now. Um, and they've been out since 11. And I'd say it's a good 25 degrees out here but not humid, thankfully. So these will be dry, dry, dry in a couple hours. So that's great. So we'll have a look at them a little bit later and let's see how they go. Like you can see that I had the brick here, right? So I didn't want to leave too much of a mark. Not that I really care. Um, that's not too bad there. It looks like some of the marks that I could see earlier, there's the circle from the pot here. These are starting to fade. Oh, it's very exciting. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get ready to do the next part. I think we'll do that video as a part two video. Um, so yeah, so stay tuned as I said, for the continuing and ever so exciting saga <laughs> of Lisa's coffee dyeing paper adventures. Okay, whoops, I'm gonna, <laughs> if I don't get this down, it's gonna be a real adventure and me chasing papers all over the backyard. Okay, I'll be back. Here we are, you guys. Okay, let me just see, hopefully. Okay. Here we are. Look at, look at, look at, look at. Oh, wait. Do I need to hang on? Do do do. No. Do do do. There we go. I'm using my phone instead of my iPad, so I'm kind of. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Oh, I am so happy. Look at this. Look at all of this amazing coffee dye goodness. So, without any further ado, let's go through it and have a look. See at what we got. Um, I can't, okay, so here, see, here we go. So we've got a little bit of the Ouija board on top of the pumpkins here and a little bit of the pumpkins on the back of the Ouija board paper. Ah, I love it. God, I love the way that smells too. And I mean, you can't, I might do a YouTube short just <laughs> just making the crinkly sounds from the coffee dyed paper. Ah, okay, this is this is great. 
So now we have the Stabby Ladies. And we've got some of the Ouija, look at, oh, that's great. The Ouija board on the back of that. And then we've got our spider web. And then here we've got the, the imprint of the scary pumpkin. Oh, this is turning out so great. So then there's some scary ladies on the pumpkins. And we've got some of the spider's web on the back of the Ouija board. Oh yeah, this is, the color of these are, is amazing as well. I really couldn't be happier with how this has turned out. So here we have some of the stabby ladies and the spider webs. <gasps> look at that color. Oh wow, look at that color. I am beyond happy. Now, something that I need to mention that I did, I mentioned in part two, because I just filmed the beginning of part two, is that I printed these off using the draft print setting on my printer, meaning that it's not the best quality print, but because what I, look at that, the Ouija board with the, the flowers imprinted on the back. Um, I wasn't sure if using less ink would mean that, I didn't know, if, because when you print on a regular standard, uh, with a regular standard setting, it uses X amount of ink to give you a really nice print. When you bring it down to draft, it, of course it uses less ink, it, so the color and everything's not as vivid. And I didn't know if that would make a difference in the coffee dyeing, and it hasn't. So save yourself a little bit of black ink that looks great and use the draft because there's best like every printer is going to be a little bit different but they give you the, the ability to, to to decide how much ink essentially you're going to use so this is where I put the flower holder thing down and it made that impression on it but that's kind of fun so we've got more Ouija board Pumpkins. I really love these these black flowers. This is fantastic. Stabby ladies. Oh, look, it's sort of like a shadow. Oh, yeah, this is fantastic. Stabby ladies, more stabby ladies. And actually, maybe I should, should I bring it over a little bit like this? Lots of Ouija boards. There we have some skulls. Okay, hang on here. Now, what's this? Here's just some blank. This turned out nice too. Maybe do some rubber stamping on the corner there. Oh, so this is some of the paper where we took the coffee grounds and just sprinkled them around. Ooh, I like that a lot. I'm loving the sort of curled rough edges as well. You know, what's interesting is that there's a little, there almost looks like this has a bit of a blue tone to it. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up, but from this, it, this in here has def, a definite bluey green color, which is interesting. Okay, how many stabby ladies did I, did I do? Holy cow, what else we got here? More Ouija board, lots of more flowers. I'm, I'm, oh my goodness. Okay, so then these are more of the, where we sprinkle. This is, these are great. Oh, I love coffee dyed paper. Boy, I got enough Ouija boards <laughs> to last me a lifetime. So we got scary ladies. Oh yeah, so this was another one where I put one of the bricks on it outside when it was still quite damp but that's all right that, well, that'll be fun in a journal right. it's like a portal into another world <laughs> so you can see that we're getting great color great transference 
It's, it looks, there's a definite grayish tone to this. So I'm glad that we used um, some darker coffee. Oh, that looks great. So these I think are, yeah, oh, that's fun. Okay, I would call this a resounding success. And I didn't have to lay them all out individually on the floor and killing my back to do so. Um, I just let them sit overnight like I showed you on the desk in piles and then took them outside. I mean, if, I, if it was winter time, um, I probably would have laid them all out on a shower curtain on the basement floor and then just left them for a day or two in the piles, right? So, the lazy ladies, <laughs> the lazy ladies, say that five times fast, way of coffee dyeing printed paper seems to be, in my opinion, a resounding success. I mean, how satisfying is that? That's great. So, in part two, we do a little bit, um, we, we shake things up a bit because I'm using different papers. Uh, we use some cardstock, we're trying photo paper, and um, some cheaper paper, and I have left some color in some of the things that I've printed off. So, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to leave it for an hour, I'm going to drain it out, and then I'm going to dry them in stacks and piles, and let's see what we get. So, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I had a, a, a lot of fun doing this with you, and like I said before, there is a million, billion, trillion videos out there about coffee dyeing. I'm not, I'm not showing you anything that's revolutionary or different, other than what I think I've done that's different is I've just let them dry in heaps, not in the oven, and um, we printed on them to get the transference, which is turning out to be brilliant. So I hope that you will come and, and also watch part two with me. And um, then after the part two of the coffee dyeing on printed paper, then I'm going to do part three, which is with stencils and a couple other things that we're going to give um, a try. So thank you. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please do me a wicked favor <laughs> and give it a, a thumbs up. Speak kindly to yourselves. Enjoy your journals. And until I see you next time, take care, everybody, and I'll see you soon. Mwah. Bye.